Now let's talk about what's happening with India's neighbor. Pakistan looks set for general elections later this year. This has been confirmed by Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif. Now in most countries, this would not be news. It would be a given. A government finishes a term and elections are held. That's how democracies function. But there's no such guarantee in Pakistan. The government of the day is not popular. They did not win elections. Their coalition filled in when Imran Khan was ousted. They've made a bigger mess of an already messy economy. But with the IMF bailout, something seems to have shifted in Pakistan. Our next report brings you the details. Pakistan is having a rare, optimistic week. Its collapsing economy has just been propped up, thanks to the International Monetary Fund and Saudi Arabia. The IMF agreed to lend Pakistan $3 billion. $1.2 billion from that has just been dispersed. Saudi Arabia agreed to send it $2 billion. It's also expecting another billion from the UAE. So you can almost hear the sighs of relief coming from Islamabad. They might finally have enough money to make it through their economic crisis. In the short run, anyway. But the stability it gives has allowed the government to make a bold statement. It will be giving up power in August and gearing up for the general election. Now, in any other democracy, this wouldn't be big news. The government giving up power when its term ends. But it is a big deal in Pakistan which, let's face it, isn't the best example of a democracy. Calling it a military puppet regime is probably more accurate. But nonetheless, the powers that be have decided to hold the general election. But we don't know when exactly that'll be. You see, yesterday, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif made this announcement. The responsibility you gave me and my party on April 2022 to take care of the country and yourselves will come to an end in August. He said his government would step down in August, that a caretaker government will take over till elections are held, and that could be in either October or November. It's a bit of a trick. If the government stays in power till the date of dissolution, August 12th, then elections will take place in October. But if they dissolve the government even a few days earlier, then the general election will be held in November instead. It's due to a strange rule where Pakistan's election commission is given 30 extra days to conduct an election in case a government steps down early. Now, we mention this because when the Sharif government chooses to step down will indicate its level of confidence. You see, it's no secret that the current regime isn't popular. It wrested power from the popularly elected government of Imran Khan last April. Reports say the military played a huge role in bringing Khan down. That he had irked them by taking them on one too many times. But Imran Khan remains extremely popular in Pakistan, which was evident in the aftermath of his arrest in May. Thousands of his supporters went on a riot. They even dared to burn down military buildings, one of the most defiant acts one can perform in Pakistan. The military and government's response has been swift and brutal. They arrested a host of Imran Khan's party members, reportedly nudged them to abandon Imran Khan and form their own party, following the grand Pakistani tradition of king's parties that are propped up by the powers that be. The crux of it is that the Pakistani establishment uses both a carrot and stick approach to cause so-called problematic parties to collapse and leave their leaders in the dust. The fact that Sharif has announced regular elections might mean the entrenched powers in Pakistan are confident of a victory. After all, Imran Khan keeps getting wrapped up in new legal cases every other day. The establishment may just corner him sooner or later, leaving an open field for Sharif's return. But despite the Pakistani military puppeting this Game of Thrones, the result of the general election isn't really certain yet. So more electoral tactics are in the pipeline. Pakistan's political parties are reportedly working on new election laws. They will allegedly be tabled during the farewell session of parliament later this month. Some of the changes include an increase to the official campaign spending limit. There are also proposed actions against election staff found involved in rigging votes. A parliamentarian said that there are 67 proposed amendments to Pakistan's electoral laws. 
But the main change that the ruling Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz wants may already be in the works. The return of Supremo Nawaz Sharif. It isn't all ironed out yet, but former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's return and his contesting the next election could be the final piece of the puzzle. But again, this isn't final yet. We'll keep you updated as the story develops.